the hard charging Frank Venuccio, as he's as he's often referred to on this program. In fact, he's never referred to that on this program. I just started referring to him as the hard charging Frank Venuccio at 46 minutes past the hour. So we are going to go <laughs> to Frank Venuccio. He is going to join us here on the old Skip Skype. Yes, the old Skype Rooney. Skype recently upgraded their system. I don't know if I exactly like their new system. But we are going to go to Frank Vernuccio. He is going to join us. USA Gov. James, how are you? There he is. Frank Vernuccio from USA Gov Policy. He joins us here on Skype Audio. And uh, Frank, there is a, a lot of things going on. Uh, I, I see just... Uh, I remember, you know, I, I say this to you all the time, but I remember when there used to be things called slow news days. <laughs> just I read exist. about one of those in the history books a long time ago. <laughs> They just don't exist anymore. This is just amazing to me. Um, so, Frank, fairly recently, a story that we, we didn't get a chance to talk about, but I, I wanted to talk with you about, is this shopping malls that have been ransacked with basically virtually zero arrests. Um, apparently this happened in Minnesota to California, targeting Best Buys and Home Depots and other high-end stores, walking off with hundreds of thousands of dollars of merchandise. What in the hell is going on here? <laughs> well, I knew you were going to ask me that. And as part of my research, I actually spoke to the manager of a Walgreens drugstore. Okay. And, and she explained to me the logic of the situation. Um, the police are frightened of responding. You know, they, they, they can get more trouble for responding than to not responding to something like this. Yes. So the managers of stores have decided that considering all the legal trouble they can get into if they try to apprehend one of these culprits, not to mention with the flash mobs, uh, you're in danger of being beaten up. Even if you have a security guard or two, you are overwhelmed by the amount of people who come in. Corporate has simply decided in many cases that it is cheaper to simply survive a limited amount of shoplifting rather than to actually attempt to stop it. This is an outgrowth of several different things. One, of course, is the election of very, very left-wing progressive district attorneys who prefer not to prosecute anything short of murder, and sometimes not even that. Um, it's also the result of no bail, low bail policies. I yes. spoke to a police captain who described what he faces in one particular incident he used as an example. Uh, a young couple was going into a restaurant around 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, they were mugged on the outside. Two guys came up, flashed guns, took their wallets and some pocketbooks. Uh, fortunately, there was a cop car, a police car, that happened to be going by at the time. They jumped out and apprehended the, uh, the, the perpetrators. The couple were grateful, of course, went into the restaurant, had a meal. When they came out of the restaurant, the perpetrators were already back on the street and outside the restaurant. Wow! <laughs> and Holy there smokes. is a feeling of exhaustion on the part of police forces that because of what's going on with prosecutors refusing to prosecute, no bail or low bail policies, these folks are just absolutely beyond control. And the flash mobs that have been descending on particularly drugstores and uh, stores like Best Buy and now the upper level stores like Nordstrom's and Macy's, um, this is the end result of all of that. You know, I would believe it was Bill Clinton or uh, Barack, excuse me, Barack Obama that once said, Famously, elections have consequences. Yes. Well, that not only applies to presidents of the United States, it applies to district attorneys as well. When you elected a very left-wing district attorney who doesn't believe that people should be in jail, that, uh, that, that wants to have no bail policies, this is the end result of what you get. We have got Frank Vernuccio with us today, USA Gov Policy. He joins us today here on our big program. 
another big story that is that is going on is this Jillian Maxwell trial. Um, I am shocked that she made it to trial. <laughs> I'm yeah, shocked the, that uh, someone didn't Epstein bump her example, off. It, it is rather surprising. Of course, she still is, is, has a ways to go. One of the things to watch out for in this whole event is the flight manifest, the passenger list of the yes. Lolita Express airplanes that took these young girls to uh, undisclosed locations. Um, the passenger manifest we know seems to include people like former President Bill Clinton. Yep. It seems to include as well some several very, very wealthy billionaires and social media moguls. Um, I think that's going to be the part of the trial that, that fascinates people the most because the implication is going to be clear that people like Clinton or those social media moguls um, were doing things that it was illegal. There used to be, I'm not even sure whether it's still in the book, something called the Man Act which meant taking a, a young woman across state lines for yes. illicit purposes. Yes. And uh, certainly, I would think a Bill Clinton or a social media mogul who was on the Lolita Express airplanes uh, would be criminally liable for something like that. So when we start to see some names coming out, we're going to watch to see whether criminal prosecutions follow in those people who participated in this Lolita Express. We've also got uh, some other things happening with this this scare tactic of this new virus. What, 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 what is going on there? Well, let me make one thing clear. Omicron is not your favorite Star Trek episode. <laughs> it's the name of the new variant. That's right. And uh, what it seems to be, and there are widely diverse views on it. In fact, some people seem to say, some, some doctors are even indicating that it might almost be a good thing, not in the sense that you want to go out and get it, but if you do get it, it is a mild form, a very mild form of uh, corona, and it might give you antibodies against the more deadly strains of coronavirus. So we'll see how this goes. The important thing at this point appears to be not to panic, at its spread because it does not appear to be very severe. It gives you relatively mild systems. You're not going to be hospitalized. You're not going to be deeply incapacitated. According to what we've seen so far, you know, that could change as this thing mutates. But right now, it does not seem to be anything to be particularly concerned about. Certainly not something to lock down the whole country again about. Yes, I, I am just really hoping that they don't... <laughs> Hey, don't do this over this thing because all indications, like you said, it's 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 fairly not that big of a deal. So you know, if if we're gonna lock down the country for something that was kind of a big deal, and then we don't, and then we want to lock the country down for something that is a tiny deal. Um. Another deal that I want to get your thoughts on, there has been some talk over the last couple, I don't know, last couple days that um, the Democrats are not very confident in Kamala Harris, and they want to move uh, Pete Buttigieg up as the uh, potential guy that would run if Biden decides not to run. Um, yeah, I would think that at GOP headquarters, they're all checking their pockets for uh, <laughs> loose change to donate to the Pete Buttigieg, uh, Camilla Harris campaign for 2024. That's right. That sounds like a real losing ticket that the GOP <laughs> would love to run against. And they're, they're, they're probably running right now to DNC headquarters saying, you know, where can we send our contribution? That's right. Um, <laughs> you know, at, at, at this point, it's bizarre. I would suspect that if the Democrats... Um, really wanted to win in 2024, they'd be looking at a ticket of, say, uh, Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema as, as their ticket. But that's not going to happen because they're part of the more, what used to be the, the moderate wing of the Democratic Party. I don't know if they're beyond Manchin and Sinema, whether there is a moderate wing of the Democratic Party anymore. But certainly, um, you're absolutely right. There's no confidence in either Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. I, I think it's a stretch to think that Joe will finish out his term. Uh, but Kamala Harris is, would be a terrible candidate. And frankly, Pete Buttigieg, 
Um, again, I, I think the Republicans are looking, you know, how can we contribute to his campaign at yes. this point? <laughs> well, Frank, before we let you go, uh, give us a preview of your radio and TV programs this weekend. We're going to be talking to Larry Clayman, who is the author of It Takes a Revolution and the founder of the uh, famous foundation judicial watch uh, we're going to be talking to judge uh, retired judge john wilson about this very conversation about no bail and we're going to be talking to david morgan who is the author of a book called the silver manifesto who's going to talk about what's going to happen when our dollars become worth less than toilet paper well, that should be very, very interesting. You can find that on many radio stations across the country, and also you can get more information at usagovpolicy.com. And, Frank, thank you for doing this, my friend. I will talk to you next week. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much. Thank you, my friend. There he goes. That is Frank Fernuccio, USA Gov Policy. You can also find him on the old Twitter machine, Frank V. Vernuccio. What is up with that Twitter handle? I don't know. Uh, he joins us each and every week here on our big program. So, we are going to do this. If you're listening to us live on the stream at JiggyJaguar.com, thank you. If you're listening to us live at 2 Central, 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, 1 p.m. Mountain State, should every day over there at JiggyJaguar.com, we thank you as well. And I just labeled an interview 1132nd. <laughs> you can truly tell I've got other stuff I'm thinking about. Uh, we are going to do this. We will inevitably see you next time. Thanks for joining us on this incredible, incredible big broadcast. <laughs>